Hello, I'm Milo, traveling with my dog, Willie Nelson. I'm Jenny, with my co-pilot, Dakota. Two solo van nomads, sharing our stories from the road. We may travel solo, but we don't have to go at it alone. Girls Just Want to Drive Vans podcast is created to help and encourage other adventurers. Thanks for joining us. Today's Girls Just Want to Drive Vans episode is brought to you by Wet Dog Room Fragrance. That's right. Want that all day long wet dog smell in your home? You can have it. Just move into your car or van and let that adorable pound puppy you just picked up roll in all that good muddy water. And then just simply let him run directly into your vehicle, avoiding the towels you had prepared. Wet dog aroma is guaranteed to make you look forward to those hot days with no rain once again. Wet Dog Room Fragrance is brought to you by hashtag livingmybestlife.com. Hi. Hey. Hey, van to van <laughs> action right here. That probably I didn't know. sound. It's like, yeah, and I feel like we're together because I can see your face. I see your face. <laughs> and it we're does different look like time zones. Yes. Different climates. <laughs> yes, and it looks like you're clean. That's an illusion I like to put off. I like it. I like it. You My last it. actual shower was the beginning of January. So. Nice. Clean is a state of mind around here. It is. It is. And that is going to be one of our topics at some point, but maybe not today. I wanted to jump into, first off, thank you for agreeing to do this with me. Um, and just being a part of this. I think there's just so much... Um, There are so many people interested in this lifestyle, whether they're going to do it or not. They just are curious about it. And a lot of the posts that are out there in videos show like this glamorous, look where I parked. It's not always that glamorous. Um, (laughs) uh, So, but just a a little bit of backstory, the, the difference between the way I'm traveling and you're traveling, I'm in a class B van. It's a Winnebago. I've got solar generator propane and a to- a toilet and a shower I don't use as another story um and then you are in your very own homemade rig let's hear a little bit about it what how'd you get into that? yeah I've got a 2006 Dodge Sprinter van uh it's shorter wheelbase but uh it's a high roof and I bought it as an empty cargo van and uh I built the home of my dreams out of it myself. Um, but I am completely self-contained as far as, um, I don't have shore power. I don't have a generator. I have solar power. Um, I have a little heater, but, uh, we're kind of bare bones on amenities. I've got a little fridge, but, um, yeah, no, like black tank or giant gray water tank around here. So, uh, yeah, different style of van for, uh, allowing me to boondock a little bit easier. What's nice that I, what I envy about you is your luscious hair. No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, thank you. Yeah, I <laughs> <laughs> the funny thing is I like just to run my hand through the back and I was like, it's already still kind of greasy. <laughs> So, so thank you. Welcome. <laughs> I was like, I hope it doesn't look as clean as it, or it's not. It doesn't feel as clean as it looks. <laughs> as far as your van goes, is it's the fact that you're diesel, so you go further, farther, and you are because of your short wheelbase. As we discovered, you can get to places that I have a hard time getting to because I. Yeah, and we also older. discovered that. M- I have a bit more clearance than you, not yes. much, but enough. So yeah, my yes. shorter wheelbase, I don't bump stuff quite the same way as you do. Milo and I followed each other down a couple of routes. I tried to take her down some interesting places this summer where we found our vans are not created equally. <laughs> they are not created equal. I was able to hang, but it, there was that one spot I had to park across the street. <laughs> Get up the, the embankment, yeah. and you had a much better view, but that's fine. It was fine. Um, so one of the biggest questions I'm asked when people find out I'm solo in a van is, "Do I feel safe?" Um, do you get that question also? Always. My do- oh, see him. 
Do you see his head? Yeah. Aww, dogs, hi, there's dogs barking outside. So he's, <laughs> oh, oh, by the way, I have some low hanging fruit. <laughs> <Can you see? laughs> it's, it's my new attempt at hanging my, my oranges and my apples. And I didn't, space is a thing. Like, where do you put it? It's like, where? Yeah, do you well, go? in my van, you have low hanging fruit. I have a banana hammock. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> so back to safety or what's the number one question? <laughs> yes. <laughs> we protect our fruit from the road, <laughs> which is important. But, but what about, are you asked often, like, how do you, if you feel safe as a female traveling alone? Um, not, not that question. Hmm. Instead, I'm usually asked, aren't you scared? Oh, um, okay. Wow. Or like, uh, how do you stay safe? Or like, do, do you carry protection? Do you carry protection? Is that how the question is asked? So, yeah, I was trying to think. The, I was asked this just a couple of days ago. <laughs> I guess it depends on what you're asking me. <laughs> I mean, it's a very personal. It's a very personal question. <laughs> I just don't. This, I, I, don't, I mean, I've never had someone <laughs> ask me that in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think if I've ever been asked that in that fashion. <clears throat> Probably not. Um, so my, I have, I recently was asked, you know, is that safe? Are you safe? Uh, I mean, is it safe to do anything these days? Like, so what? Yeah. I, right? Like, so what? I'm in a van with my dog and he's clearly very protective of the fruit that's hanging there. Um, but yeah, I think, um, and you and I both belong to some, some groups, uh, especially, uh, on Facebook where I find there's a lot of women asking other women, like, are you afraid? Do you feel safe? Like, what do you have, for, what do you have for protection? And I always think it just seems odd, I guess, because I, I mean, have you ever, have you ever not felt safe? Um, so I've had, I've had one scary incident on the road. Okay. Um, but I honestly think it was a matter of a misunderstanding. It was a weird, it's a weird story that I'm happy to share. Would you like me to share it? Yes. Okay. Please. So I know this is crazy to think of the state that my weird encounter happened in being Florida, because nothing weird ever happens in Florida. Crazy. <laughs> yeah, so I was in Florida, and I found a site on one of the apps <clears throat> that we used to find campsites. I think it was on maybe iOverlander, and it had said, like, it was near a boat ramp, but there was a review of the boat ramp that said we've tried to park here, but somebody came over who like owns the boat ramp area or is like a ranger or something. And he said, we actually can't park at the boat ramp, but there's an empty grassy lot next to it. And he directed us to camp there. He owns both of them. So I'm like, perfect. It has a recent review. It says, don't camp here, camp here. This seems legitimate. Hmm. And in Florida, I tend to camp a lot in Walmart parking lots or Cracker Barrel parking lots because I don't pay to camp. Right. So I was excited to get out of a parking lot. And so I pull into this field and the only person there, which is my comfort zone to be alone. So I'm like all snuggled in with my dog hanging out. And I hear a guy's voice behind my back doors. Again, I'm alone in like a big field. There should be nobody around. Like I'm not even close to the road. Um, and there's a man's voice out the back doors, which I was leaning against and I hear him reading off my license plate. So I figure he's a cop. He's reading off my plate to a phone or something. Um, so I go to get myself up out of bed. I had a, a string of getting cop knocks 
uh, (laughs) during this time. So I was like, all right, here we go again. I get up to go to the side door, but I thought, you know, I don't want to startle a cop by opening the door. I'll wait for him to knock first. So I'm standing at my side door waiting for him to knock. And instead of knocking, he pulls the handles of the back doors to open the back door of my van. No knock, just pulled the handle. And so like my adrenaline goes and I'm like trying to figure out what I'm going to do. Do I grab a knife? Do I like, I shut all the lights off on the inside and then he started up his truck and he drove away. So the, that was it. The door was locked. The door was locked. So he couldn't gain access. No. And and he pulled it once. He pulled it once. That was locked. Drove off. That's yeah. So it was like weird because it seemed like, I mean, Mm. if you were trying to harm someone, you wouldn't be calling in a license plate. Right. Um, you would be trying multiple doors. So you never laid eyes on the vehicle or the person. Nope. So did you leave? Yes. I left because I'm smart and I listen to my gut. And this is how I stay safe. When people ask me how you stay safe on the road, something feels wrong. You leave. My house has wheels. So I took it to a nearby Walmart and spent the night there instead. But again, it was like, nobody hurt me as much as it scared me. I also didn't feel like there was a part of me that was like, do I stay? Like he didn't tell me to leave. But this also feels weird, so I'm going to leave. But it didn't It didn't really feel like I was in danger. It scared me that he tried to open the back doors. And part of me wonders if he just thought it was like an abandoned vehicle and wanted to see if it was unlocked. I have no idea. So but weird. that's the scariest thing that's happened. Which, again, is like, I don't think I was in danger. No. <clears throat> no. I mean, it, we don't know because you left. So that, that was yeah. smart, right? You left. You, mm-hmm. you know, you just took yourself out of the situation. There was only one time I left. I was in Texas, of all places. <laughs> I was, Florida and Texas, what? I was uh, north westish. I don't know. I was, I found a free place to park. It was a state park. It was supposed to be next to the water, which it was. Um, it was a bit grimy water, but it was fine. Um, at the time I didn't have my dog, Willie Nelson. Hi. <laughs> and I was still really new at this. I was think I was headed to Colorado for the first time. And I remember, um, I, I there's a confidence when no one knows if I'm alone, right? If no one sees me around the van or in and out of the van, they don't really know who's in the van. So being inconspicuous or, you know, keeping a low profile is that's a bonus, right? Well, I blew my cover, so to speak, because someone needed help. They were yelling for help. And so I stuck my face out and I'm like, there's a woman calling for help in a car, like within like 500 feet from, from the van. And there's another car, a couple, I had, I had, I had saw them arrive and they were headed that way to help her, but I thought I would also help. So I get out of the van I go help this woman and she's, she's teetering. Like she caught her undercarriage of her car. So she couldn't get traction on her back or front tire. She had front wheel drive because she was tipped. And so her front tire wasn't on the ground. It was just spinning because she kind of rolled off into a ditch a bit. Now there wasn't a cliff, but the way she was responding was that she was on the edge of a cliff about to die. And so the young man, was trying to say, Hey, just turn your wheel. You're, you're going to be fine. Just back up a little bit. So the wheel grabs the ground and you can turn it. She's like, I can't, I can't, I can't, I need you to do it. And I looked at him and went, you're, you were going to do it. I was not getting in this woman's car. And I said, well, put the emergency brake on before he gets in her car. Right. So there's some backup. She's like, I don't have an emergency brake. Okay. So this little dude had to like squeeze behind the woman, a stranger who's trying, you know, so anyway, her friend showed up while all this was happening, dudes in her car and 
we don't know this woman, her friends show up because she's been missing. And I can just tell you, I instantly felt like I was in the wrong place. Like there was no reason for me to be around this group. It's not like they did anything overtly to make me feel that way, but I just could feel like, you know what? These are not, these are not my people. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> intuition. Yeah. So, and at that point I blew my cover. They were going to see me go back to my, my van and they're going to see that I was alone because the other two people went back to their car together. So I bit the bullet and just decided to go drive to a campground, not the Walmart. It was four hours away, but I pushed and I just went ahead and went because I just wanted to be, I just want a really good night's sleep. It had been a really long day. And at that time I could do long hours because I didn't have the dog. So that was the worst. That was the scariest. There have been times that I have, I have gone, I'd laid down thinking, am I going to be able to sleep? Because maybe something's out or I got someplace at night and I didn't really see the place during the day. But for the most part, I feel very safe. But the dog helps, especially when he's got that deep bark. I'm sure you feel the same way about Dakota. Yes. Yeah. I mean, she actually the other day freaked out. It was like dark. We went for a long walk and we were coming back kind of in the dark. And she saw a sign off in the distance that she didn't know what it was. And she like puffed up. All her fur went up. She like stood right in front of me. So I was like, yeah, she'd she'd mess someone up. But also like I've had moments where like someone goes to open my back doors and Dakota's like, what's going on now? I'm sure if they came (laughs) in and like, I was scared, she'd jump into action, but, uh, she did not start barking. (laughs) But my dog also doesn't bark. She's like, you got this. She waits to rip someone to shreds once they're already in the van. It's fine. So I wanted to just to kind of have like a kind of a pattern to this to talk about. So the safety was a little, we touched on safety, but I also wanted to ask you as far as like where you are, what is your favorite thing about where you are, where you're camping now? What's your favorite thing about your location? Um, This is one of my favorite spots ever. I actually camped here a ton before I lived in a van before, like this is where the van life dream was born out of. Oh, um, yeah. So it's a super special place to me, but I, my favorite thing about this spot, first of all, the views are Mm. unbeatable and like the convenience, the cell signal. I mean, it's got everything it needs, but it has the most awesome mountain bike trails that I don't even have to drive to right out my front door. So if I don't have to drive to have an adventure and I can just do it from my front door and I have a cell signal. And it's beautiful. Like I could just stay here forever, except it's cold right now. <laughs> well, I was going to say, what's the worst thing about where you're at? Um, right now it's the temperature. Mm-hmm. What is and it gets goal? really windy in here in this area. So the wind can be kind of brutal. Um, the low, uh, I think last night it was like 23. Degree? Yeah. <laughs> Degrees. Fahrenheit? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. It's cold. We're in the desert. So it was like 23 last night and then a high of 60 because it's wow. the desert. Yeah. yeah. No. Mm-mm. Well, our, our uh, low tonight will be 55 and our Ooh. high tomorrow because there's a cold front coming in is going to be like 66 tomorrow. So it'll be rainy. And I will say the worst thing about where I'm at is the bugs because of the warm humidity. Oh. Um, we, and I found ticks on me (laughs) and the dog after our walk today. So the trails are lovely and wooded and nice and full of bugs. So ticks are my least favorite thing. And I've had to really get comfortable with the fact that if you feel something, investigate. (laughs) Oh, right. (laughs) If you feel it, don't let it go. Go get it. You know what I'm saying? See, Get this is the why I stay on the <laughs> west side of the U.S. because I don't do bugs. <laughs> Give I me pull- cacti and rattlesnakes, but I don't do bugs. <laughs> I had to pull them off me, and I had to pull them off him. And then, um, and yes, he's on treatment, but still, they have to bite him to die. So I just pulled them off of him. Yes. Um, 
But my favorite thing is, is that it is really convenient. Like we can walk out and there are trails and paths and we're just going to avoid the woods. We've just, I've decided we're just going to stay on there. Some paved paths. We're just going to do that because t- peeling ticks off his face. Whew, I'm just done. <laughs> I'm just done. I'm done with it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, we, we've had our fair share of experience with ticks in the area where you are now. Uh, to plug my own podcast, today's podcast was yes. titled Ticks Live in Georgia. <laughs> oh, gross. I wish I had known that before I got to Georgia. Yeah. It, it, I had no idea out. it was going to be this bad. I had no idea. Uh-huh. Disgusting. No, I wouldn't have thought that's where you'd find them. But mm-hmm. ugh, yeah. Well, <laughs> well, I think this was great for our first girls just want to drive vans. This is fun. Yeah. It was fun. <laughs> This is fun. It makes me miss you. Um, So as we are states and states apart, we'll connect here once a week and we'll see if we can get this to upload correctly and, and get more people to, you know, just love bands with us. (laughs) Still working on that catchphrase. Still trying to figure out what our catchphrase is going to be. Come love bands with us. Come bring your own protection. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. yeah it's you yeah b-y-o-p b-y-o-p no no okay well we'll sign off for here but you stay safe and tick you free do. and tick free uh, yeah you stay tick free we'll work on the safe part but <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much until next time thanks, thanks for listening coming soon you will be able to subscribe to receive our newsletter which will include links to our campsites items we carry on our vans and photos from our journey you can also catch jenny on her podcast adventures from the van or tune in to milo's podcast at milo talks thanks for listening and just go do and see everything you can in a safe way